Uh, we're in a series called um, Confident, and this is part four of our series. And um, we're trying to discover the secret to confidence. In the last sermons, in the last talks that I talked to you, we talked about uh, confidence that comes from knowing that God can be trusted, that He is with me, and that He loves me. How many of you know, when you know that this great power is standing behind you, I have a little echo on this mic, guys, if you could fix it, that would be great. Thank you. Um, if you have this power, God power behind you, you have no reason to be afraid. If you know that all things work for good for those who love God and called according to His purpose. If I were to, to use analogy of building a house, how do you build a house? You first have to pour, you have to dig a hole and pour footings. Okay, and then you have to pour the foundation. And then on that foundation, you build, you know, lumber, windows, roof, air conditioning, and all that other stuff, carpet and inside. So if I were to say in, in the terms of building a house, confidence would come from the, the footings would be of that house would be knowing that God loves me as much as he loves Jesus. Not just knowing that, getting a revelation of that. When you get the revelation of that, it will change everything in your life. That's secret one to confidence. Secret number two to confidence is loving yourself. Amen? How can you value other people if you don't value yourself? How can you accept people if you don't even accept yourself? How can you love all the mistakes and craziness that you see people do if you don't love yourself with all your mistakes and craziness? Amen? So secret number two is to love yourself. If you can get one and two, you'll already feel pretty confident in your life. If you can accept yourself. But today I'm going to give you key number three to secrets of confidence. And this is the last one. And that's confidence or perfect confidence comes when we love others. When we practice love. When I was 20 years old, I was dating my beautiful fiance named Tanya. And she was from Minneapolis. I was from here. We met at the wedding. It was cool. Uh, I, I was shy to go and talk to her, so I asked my friend who was a bridesmaid uh, at that wedding, and I said, listen, uh, can you tell that girl over there to come and talk to me? <laughs> and she did. She's like, jerk, you go talk to her. I'm like, no, tell her to come here. Um, and so she came, and we talked, and 20 years later, Amen. we're still here. Amen. And... Uh, I was running a, a small business uh, that I started, and I hired one of my buddies. I hired one of my buddies. He was a great guy, funny, easygoing, chill, talked a lot, you know, was not shy or anything like that. Just one of those outgoing extroverts. Everybody liked him. But the problem was he would get in trouble, and he would ignore his responsibility. So he would get um, a ticket and wouldn't pay it. Then he got caught with uh, no insurance and he didn't go to court. So there was warrants for his arrest. Then he loved to smoke a little bit of something, you know, and got caught with that and, and got bailed out and didn't go to court. So as being a 20-year-old guy, he had a bunch of stuff piling up and he would just be so chill. And somehow, I'm not like that. If I have, I called periodically to my insurance company and make sure that I still have insurance on in my vehicles. <laughs> Honestly, like the lady in insurance knows me. Okay, he was not like that. I'm like, hey, so tell me what vehicles I have under my insurance. And she's like, well, this, this. Okay, now go business. What is in business? Oh, this, this, this. Okay, good. <sighs> right? I am a control freak. I'm sorry. 
I'm working on it. God is working on that. But, but he was not like that. So he had all these things, and he lived like there was no worries. Akuna Matata, you know, lifestyle. And one day, um, he was from a Christian family. His mom and dad went to my church, so I knew the family. But he was not really a Christian. He didn't go to church. And then I hired him, and he worked for me. And I invited him to church, and he started coming to church. And at lunches, we would talk about God. And so, you know, he started coming to church. And then one night, in the middle of the night, at 2 in the morning, I get a phone call. Hello, you get a collect call from Sioux Falls County Jail. Have you ever got that call? Right? Uh, And who is this? Alex. Who is this, you know? Uh, And so... uh, Alex was, and I have like four friends named Alex, so you don't know which one it is. <laughs> My son is Alex too. But anyway, uh, he, uh, he asked me, hey, can you please uh, bail me out? And I'm like, what? And I'm like, how much is it? And he's like, and it was a big amount. I mean, it's a big amount. Even for that time, it's a big amount. So I, I click. I'm like, nope. It's 2 in the morning. Sorry, man. So he calls me again. (laughs) And he's like, please, for the love of God, you know I've turned my life around. I'm a Christian now. I go to a church. (laughs) And so um, uh, he, uh, uh, he, I'm like, okay, I'm coming. So at four in the morning, I get up. I bring the money. I bail him out. And he skips town. Still my buddy. He's like, I'm going to pay you. Don't worry about it. Um. But he skips town. When he skips town, uh, we're still friends. We talk on the phone, you know. Uh, everything is good. And um, so I go to town where he's at. And uh, he calls me. He's like, hey, where are you guys hanging out at? We're like, we're in Applebee's. Come on over. You know, we're still friends. I mean, he promised to pay me back as soon as he gets, gets a job or whatever. Cool. So um, he... Um, uh, he, he didn't come for a long time. Plus, the line to, to be seated was like an hour and a half. So we decided to go to another Applebee's that was close by in the mall. So we go to another Applebee's. He calls me and says, hey, man, um, where are you guys at? I'm like, we're in this other Applebee's. By the time he comes to the other Applebee's, we're already done eating. So we leave, you know, and he calls us. Uh, I think we even met. As we were leaving, he came to Applebee's. Yeah, you don't remember. Okay, I remember this story forever. And, uh, and so we just said goodbye, and we were going one way. He was going another way. They had to do other things. And um, so I go home from that town. Everything is good. I'm not thinking about anything. And then my fiancé calls me and says, Did you know what your buddy Alex says? That you robbed his apartment. Because he owed you money. While... While he thought I was in another Applebee's, you were at his house. Where I didn't even know where he lived. It's a big city. It was a million plus people city. So it's a huge city. So I didn't rob him. I didn't know where he lived. I still don't know where he lives. What neighborhood even he lived. And uh, he said, you know what? Uh, I, I asked my wife, uh, what was stolen? And he's like, well, uh, nothing was stolen, uh, but the door was open. When I came home, the door was a little bit open. And nothing was stolen. But it was probably me, he said. Because he owed me money, so I came to rob his home. And um, I just couldn't believe that. And then he said, uh, I am not going to pay him anything back because he tried to rob me, so now we're even. You don't know what it did to me. I was so mad. I was so angry. And uh, I uh, just, I was in a bad place. And later, he's chill. So he calls me, how you doing? Yeah. How you doing? Everything is good. You know, he's one of those chill people. And I I can't even stand him. I can't even be around him. Every time I'm with him, I lock up. Because I our friends, we would hang out together. And any time I was around him, I would lock up. And I was a, a young person youth leader then in that time I was 20 years old and uh, uh, my church wouldn't let me preach on Sunday but they would let me preach on Sunday night you know so they would put like the future preachers or somebody who is like you know maybe not 
good enough for Sunday morning. They put him on Sunday night. So they put me on Sunday night. And it was my first Sunday night. I've never preached on Sunday night. And so I preached my message. And I mean, the Spirit of God moved. I don't know what happened, but just like there was like a, like you could feel the whole church was like shaking and moving. And I was like so excited. I left church. Tanya wasn't there. I'm driving home and I am just on high heaven. My bubble is just, just, I am like on in this third heaven feeling. And as I'm driving, the Lord speaks to me and he speaks to me through these words. If you open to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, and you know this because every wedding, they read this. It says this, If I could speak all languages of earth and angels, but I don't love others, I would only be a noisy don or a clinging cymbal. Just an empty sound. Verse 2, if I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all God's secret plans and possess all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but I don't love others, I would be nothing. And I felt like the Lord took a needle and just went poop to my bubble and just went, Poosh. and all of my pride, all of my enthusiasm just went like, I don't love this guy. I hate this guy. I really hate this guy. All I could do is, guys, if, when you hate somebody, all you can do is think about them 24-7. They're always on your mind, and it's not in a good way. Instead of enjoying life, I was thinking about him. Not loving just one person. I loved everybody else. But not loving just one person crippled me on the inside. And that's when I learned this secret that absence of love is crippling to the soul depressing to the soul and I began to repent and I said and I had a choice there to believe God and his word and obey God and his word or I had a choice and say I'm going to forgive this person and after I made a decision right there in the car I'm going to forgive him for another month I have to forgive him every day until finally today, I loved the guy. I never got my money back, but he was in my house. We were eating food. We were hanging out. And, and I'm free again. I was crippled. I was in prison, in my prison of my own self. It was tearing me apart. So I, I've learned at 20 years old the secret and the power of love. I'm not talking about romantic love today. What could intersect, but... I'm talking about the power of love. Let's keep reading. If I gave everything I have to the poor, you can do that. Can we go to verse 2? Because I want to show you something about confidence. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans, and possessed all knowledge, if I had faith, confidence is what? Is a branch on a tree called faith. So, so you can have some sort of confidence... You can have faith that could move mount mountains. Imagine you could move mountains. Would that give you confidence? Could we say that you're a confident person if you can move mountains? You have such faith. But yet, without this one component, without love, you don't have true confidence. You don't have true faith. But I don't love others. I would be nothing. So today I want to talk to you about real love and fake love. Today I want to talk to you about real confidence and fake confidence. True confidence versus fake confidence. Keep going. If I gave everything I have to the poor and I and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. I could be confident. I could boast about it. Look what I've done. I gave my body for you. <laughs> but if I don't love others, I would have gained nothing. The older I get, the more I realize it's not about keeping commandments. It's about walking in love. 
the old the more I know God the more I realize that it's not about rules and regulations it's about love and I'm not talking fish love you know what fish love is I love fish if I really did love fish I wouldn't catch it hook it skin it fry it and eat it that's not love right but that's the kind of love we we are yeah if you do this for me it's a conditional love we're not talking about conditional love we're talking about unconditional love but here here it is i would have gained nothing keep going love is patient and kind love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude it does not demand its own way it is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged do you keep records this person did that for me check that person did that to me do you keep record or do you forgive fast if you're a christian and you cannot forgive fast there's something's wrong you're living in some sin because we're called to walk in love it does not demand its own ways it is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wrong keep going guys it does not rejoice about injustice but rejoices whenever the truth wins out love never gives up never loses faith is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance prophecy and speaking in a known language and speaking uh, and special knowledge will become useless but love will never fail can you go to verse 13 three things will last forever faith hope and love and the greatest of these is love what is love love is caring about another person's happiness without demanding any benefits for yourself let me say that again write this down love is caring about another person's happiness without demanding any benefit for yourself as long as you say uh, I love this woman because she makes me because she gives me because I love this man I love this person because then it's not unconditional love it's conditional love unconditional love desires the happiness of others without anything asking anything in return unconditional love so the question you might have how can confidence come from loving others right because that's my message confidence true confidence or perfect confidence comes from loving others and here it is a person who does not love or does not practice walking in love cannot truly be confident a person who does not walk in love cannot truly be confident now you can have fake confidence in my 20s i had a lot of fake confidence some of my confidence came from the car i was driving I bought me the most expensive that at that time that I could afford car and it made me confident I was wearing certain clothes that would make me confident I would buy a big watch it would make me confident but inside I would be insecure little boy so there's fake confidence someone says um, insecurity is loud confidence is quiet but you know Bible says confidence is peaceful how do you know a person is insecure or confident insecure could show confidence by being loud look at me look at me hey you know I'm the best I have the best stuff secure person confident person has that quiet peace attitude okay so I have a little example here for you. I need one of the young people to come and hold my microphone. Guys, can, who, who, uh, who wants to come? You don't have to say nothing. Just run here. All right, Junior. All right. Hold my mic. All right. Let's say this is perfect you. 
If I had a pen, I would write here, perfect you. You were created to be loved and to love others. Okay? You were created to. Let's do this. Let's try to remove love out of you. Okay? So I'm going to fold this. I'm going to try to bring that mic. Come on, follow me with that mic. Yeah, thank you. All right. So I'm going to go into my crafting um, years when I was in kids' church. And um, I'm going to cut out love. I think this is how you do it. If my heart doesn't look good, um, maybe I'll try it better in the second service. Okay. So I cut out love. Now what happens? empty. Now we like to believe that without love that place just stays empty. So what? Let it be empty. But can I tell you that in your soul could never be empty. Jesus even said that. When demons leave this part of you and it stays empty they go back and take seven more demons and fill that emptiness. Amen. So when, when you don't have love, something else fills it. Can I tell you the biggest thing that fills this hole right here? Is fear. St. John wrote, closer, closer. St. John wrote, perfect love does what? Casts out fear. So when there is no love here, this place gets filled with fear. Fear brings worries and anxiety. It brings jealousy, envy, suspicion, competition, disagreeableness. I don't know if that's the right word. It fills it. And so now you're thinking, where is this jealousy coming from? Where is this envy coming from? Absence of love. The natural state of being. The way you were created by God is to have this place be filled with love. You function best when you are loved and when you love others. Thank you. Thank you so much. You function best when you love God and loved by Him. When you love yourself and when you love others. Remove one of those components and you misfire. I call it glitches of the soul. Your soul, your inner mind glitches and you're filled with anxieties and worries and fears and all the other crap that begins to fill your heart. You didn't mean it. But it's natural. Sin fills the emptiness. And here's what we do. And Jesus was a genius. He is a genius. Because he said, love is the greatest. Then Paul picked it up says, love is the biggest. John writes, when he's old, he says, love, love, love. What is this? They've stopped talking about commandments at the end of their life. They're talking about love. What did they knew that the rest of the world didn't know at that time? What do they knew that you don't know today? See, you can focus, say, well, I have this jealousy. I just can't beat it. I'm just jealous of people. I just envy people. And so you, you start working on envy. And the more you work on it, the, the harder it, it is. Because you are, because See, love, the Bible says, is fulfillment. See, love is so powerful that it fulfills the whole law. Amen. So you can do this. You can focus on all the law, trying to fulfill all God's law so you don't sin, and you'll fail miserably. But if you just focus on walking in love, love will push out. If you put love back in its place it will push out just like if you turn on the light in a darkness it will drive the darkness 
away. Amen. See, we focus on sins. And by the time we get one out, another one pops out. It's like squeezing that, you know, balloon ball. You squeeze it here, it pops out there. You squeeze it there, it pops out everywhere. You see, the key and what you should focus on for the rest of your life is walking in love. And it's not natural for us. And Jesus says, just love one another. The greatest commandment is to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. So three keys to happiness and to confidence, true confidence, is loving God and being loved by Him. Loving yourself and then loving your neighbor as you love yourself. Hallelujah. Only love can remove fear out of your life. Only love can remove envy, jealousy, suspicion, impatience out of your life. Only love can bring true confidence into your life. <laughs> I grew up in a church. Are you guys being blessed by this? Do you understand what I'm saying? The words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> mouth. Let me give you another example. Um, We've always had a cat since I've been married to my wife because she's a cat lady. Um, and uh, and uh, living on a, a acreage or kind of surrounded by farms, mice want to come in. And they come into a garage and they, you know. But if you have a cat, you stop seeing mice. You see them dead maybe by the steps in a garage. You know, cats like to show off. They, they kill a mouse and bring it. <laughs> And then they, they meow to make sure you've seen what they've done. Their trophy. All right. But something happened. Uh, either a cat got poisoned or bit by something. Uh, just on our driveway, nothing wrong. He just died one night. And um, so we haven't had a cat for since like September. Okay. And uh, we've started seeing mice run around in our garage. Just like, Doo -doo -doo -doo. and it freaks us out. And then the other day, I looked out of the window, and I saw these little tiny, like, feet. I'm like, what is that? What could be so small? And then I realized, oh, those are mice. They come out into the yard and then run back to the house because you don't see them running all the way, you know? And I'm like, oh, shoot, we got mice. We need a cat. So we bought that, you know, poison stuff we could put everywhere. So we did that. But still, when we had a cat, we didn't see a lot of, you know, mice. Because the cat drove away the mice. Just like love drives away these pesky things that like to attach themselves. Like fear, like worry, like anxiety. When you're filled with love, perfect love. It drives out fear. Pastor, how can me loving others uh, drive out me worrying about my kids? See, I'm not talking just you loving others. I'm also talking about knowing who are you loved by. You are loved by the creator of the universe who loves you as much as he loves Jesus. And all things work together for good. See, you can't control everything. But you also know, when you know Christ, that this, is not, this life is not the end. So Jesus said, don't even fear about those who can kill your body, because they can't kill your soul. So when you know that God is in control, you know that He loves you, that gives you confidence to not worry about your children driving by themselves at night. And I got to admit, I got teenagers, and they drive at night because they work late now. And it's like, where are they? I hope uh, they're going to be okay. Yesterday was snowing, and they were driving from work. And I was like, but I'm like, God, I trust you. Amen. Put those angels around, and I'm not going to fear. I'm not going to sit here and because I know I'm loved by you, and I love you, so all things work together for good. Amen. Amen. How can love make me more confident? Second point, and this is a quick one. It's hard to be 
self-focused when you're focusing and loving others. Did you lo know that a lot of your problems come from being so self-focused? And love is other-focused. How do I look? Oh, do I look good? I don't look as good as everybody. Oh, right? How do I look? How do I look? I'm so, I'm just not so smart. I'm this, I'm that. That's you focusing on self, and it causes a lot of problems in your being. But love makes you focus on others because you already love yourself. So you forget about yourself. And when you do forget about yourself, that's when you truly live. Because you can live in a moment. You can actually enjoy the moment and not worry about what everybody else is thinking about you. You're free to live and enjoy your life loving others. No wonder Jesus commanded. And he also prayed before he died. He said, I pray that they would walk in love. I pray that they would love one another. The goal of this message is to convince you, to make you believe that you don't have to focus on your sin. Focus on how you can love God, love yourself, and love others. Love others with all of their craziness. See, God doesn't say, see, I grew up in a church where uh, we were like forced to love. Like, you have to love, you have to love. But I've never seen that love. Honestly. We were religious. We were all about how you look. We were all about um, uh, reputation, where you sit, and who your friends are, and what will, other, what, what will other people think. That's the kind of church I grew up in. Talk a ton about love, but I just didn't see it. And if somebody would leave the church and go to another church, oh, there are our enemies now. That's the kind of church I grew up with. Not here, of course, because that's not true love. Because that's not true love. If somebody doesn't feel comfortable here, they should find a place where God called them to be and they could, you know, spread their roots. Now, if God is calling you to every church every three months, then you got a problem. It's not God. You just get offended at people and you leave. Okay? You're just uncommitted. Uh, and and you, you, you like to go to a restaurant and then you uh, dine and dash. That's who you are. If you go to church, if you skip churches, if you, what is that called? Can I be honest today? If you're a church hopper, you're not walking in love. You, you're, you don't have any roots and God doesn't speak to you. You're just, you, you move by your emotions. Because God plants people by the rivers of water. And those people then produce fruit. But if you keep on replanting yourself all the time, you're not walking in love. And you can't produce much fruit. And anyway, sorry, pastor's frustration. <laughs> But I love you all. I love you all. And here's why I care. Not so you just stay in my church forever. Because I know that you will grow when you put roots down. And when you grow, you'll produce fruits. And your life will be happier. Listen, um, I make my own money, so I don't need you for the money. Well, you know, some pastors, that this is their job. So that's all they want, you know, your money. This is not it. I want you to have the life that Christ came to die for a thief comes to kill steal and destroy jesus said i have come to give you life to the fullest Amen. and i believe if you walk in love you can have that life Amen. how how do i walk in love be quick to forgive when you wake up in the morning and say i'm gonna love people today god loves me he loves the sinner hates the sin right I'm going to love the sinners and hate the sin. But a lot of times we show a lot of hate to people. We don't show a lot of love. You should show love, love of a person ten times greater than you should hate their sin. Hold on. Let me say it. I, I'm looking for words. Holy Spirit, give me the words. Okay. You should show people love ten times more then you should show them how much you hate their sin. Jesus said, love one another. If it was easy, if it was natural, 
We would do it. But you know what? We live in a sinful body, so it's not natural. Sin wants to what? You step on my foot, I'm going to step on your head. <laughs> That's what sin wants me to do. Revenge. Vengeance is mine. <laughs> Says Alex, not the Lord. <laughs> right? That's what your nature wants to do. Your nature wants to just pay back. I'm going to make you an offer. You can't refuse. So, so it's natural to us. But today, I'm going to make a decision, and I'm asking you. I feel like the Lord is, is showing you this revelation so you can live life to the fullest. I'm going to commit today. I'm going to walk in love. Even people I don't like, I'm going to love. I'm going to, on purpose, wake up in the morning, and I'm going to walk in love. So a couple of months ago, I asked you to print uh, put on humility. Remember that? I've printed it. It's on my office desk. Uh, walk, uh, put on humility. And today I'm going to ask you to print a white on a on a white piece of paper or write it with a marker or something, and put it right where you can see it on your mirror. Walk in love today. Towards yourself. Walk in love. Walk in love towards God. Love God, and then walk in love towards your neighbor. Absence of love cripples the human soul. That one guy, and he did some, he took some money from me <laughs> and accused me of robbing his place when I've never robbed his place. I don't remember robbing. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> I do remember that one time I took some. <laughs> but that was, I was 11, so. <laughs> so I remember that forever. Was with my unchristian schoolmate who I was preaching to. <laughs> At 11, I was preaching to him, and then when an opportunity rose up, we both stole something. <laughs> and I've lived with that. <laughs> For the rest of my life, I'll remember that. But I'm going to walk in love. And I'm not going to be crippled anymore. I'm going to love my enemies. Because my love doesn't excuse what they've done. If they killed somebody, I want them to go to jail. And spend if, the rest of their life in prison. But I'm not going to walk in hate towards them. Because I, hate has no room. Hate has no room in a, in a soul that is filled with the love of God. I want no room for anything else in my life. Some of you are this. No wonder you're depressed. No wonder you're anxious all the time. Fill with this. Fill your soul. Because the natural state of being is to walk in love. Hallelujah. Would you stand to your feet? Hallelujah. Three secrets to confidence is what? Shout it out. Number one. Receive God's love. And love him back, of course. I think we, we, we are loved first. We don't love God first. We, we later love God. But you, the first thing you have to do is receive the love of God. Receive the revelation that God loves me as much as he loves Jesus. The sacred secret to confidence and happy life is what? Love yourself. Don't hide your sins. Say, yeah, I am. God is still working on that. But God loves the sinner. And is working on sin. <laughs> and number three, the perfection of confidence is to what? Love others. Walking in love. Thank you, Jesus. Close your eyes and bow your head. I want to pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this great revelation that you have given to our church. So our people 
to be light in the dark world so they can walk in God confidence not in self-confidence or the type of confidence that the world says to walk in but to walk in God confidence full of peace and humility and full of love thanks for tuning in to new life sermon series online if you're blessed by these messages and are interested in helping spread the word of God to others make an investment today you can give at newlifechurchsf.org. If you have a story or a testimony to share, let us know on our website as well. We hope you have a blessed day and enjoy today's message by Pastor Alex.